25 million Africans live with HIV infection, a disease characterized by weight loss. Fortunately, in most settings, there's now access to antiretroviral treatment, ART. But the poor nutritional status of the patients is often neglected. Clinicians see that their patients are gaining weight at the start of ART and therefore conclude that the drugs also resolve any nutritional problems. We looked at it differently. We believed that if an HIV patient was to recover after a 5 or 10 kg a weight loss, then the nutritional requirements would be greater, not smaller, and that the patients would need not only micronutrients, but also energy and high quality proteins. So our team of Ethiopian and Danish researchers aimed to test if a lipid-based nutrient supplement given for three months at the start of ART would support regain of lean mass and functional recovery. We did our study among HIV patients in Jima, Southwest Ethiopia. Like elsewhere, HIV patients in Jima now have access to ART, but nutritional support is not routinely given, although most patients are from food insecure households. The product we, test, we tested was a lipid-based nutrient supplement, as the one I have here with either whey or soy protein. Each participant would eat two of these sockets, or 200 grams per day, for a three-month period. We also wanted to test if delayed supplementation could be more effective than early supplementation. So as you can see in the figure, we randomized HIV patients to receive the supplement with whey or soy during the first three months of ART, and a control group were unsupplemented for the same period, and then received the supplement during the subsequent three months. However, patients with BMI between 16 and 17 were only randomized to early supplementation with whey or soy. The primary outcomes were lean body mass, assessed using a stable isotope technique, and grip strength and physical activity at three months after initiation of ART. Additional outcomes were viral load and CD4 and CD3 and CD8 counts. All outcomes were also measured after six months at the end of the delayed supplementation. The effects of supplementation were considerable. As you can see here, compared with ART alone, both the whey and the soy containing supplements resulted in almost an additional one kilogram lean mass, the primary outcome. And this effect was accompanied by an effect on grip strength but not on physical activity. As expected, the modest weight gain in those only receiving ART was mainly composed of fat. Interestingly, the weight containing supplement increased CD3 and CD8 counts and had a borderline significant effect on CD4 counts. No such effects were shown for the soy containing supplement, but there were no significant difference between whey and soy for this and other outcomes. We also saw some difference between early and late supplementation, which merits further research to define the optimal timing of supplementation. Based on the findings from our study, we believe that HIV patients starting ART, not only in Ethiopia, but also in other food insecure settings, should be offered nutritional support to cover their requirements in the first critical phase. Thank you very much for your attention.